So I have been a ZQuest Classic Quest developer now for a couple of years who has done quite a decent amount of scripting. And by far one of the hardest things with scripting is having a good development environment to do the scripting in. For me, I'm sure a lot of you other developers out there are the same where you do most of your scripting in Notepad++ or some other, I guess, primitive text editor. And it's a real rough time because you don't have much of the niceties that typical software developers have which I am one, so I'm very familiar with having a fully automated formatting, linting, and whatnot, using an IDE that helps with autofill. There's a lot of that kind of stuff that we never really get to experience with this kind of scripting. And that is why I have tried to come up with a way so that we could experience some of that. I'm actually going to go through it again from scratch instead of just showing you what it looks like done and then all the things that I think I remember changing. I'm actually going to go through and complete the process again on my other on my laptop to make sure I'm not leaving anything out. So the first thing you're going to do, download v VS Code. Obviously, you just download it for whatever machine you have. I'm on Windows. If you have if you're on a Mac and you have Mac issues, I'm sorry. I don't have a Mac, so I can't really help you with that. But uh, I'm just going to go through the typical VS Code installation pro process. All right, so now VS Code is set up. All right, so now we're in VS Code. I'm not going to go through a lot of the settings and whatnot. Okay, so now we're going to open our scripting folder. So I'm going to open mine up here for uh, Terror of Necromancy. So if any of you are curious of what kind of scripts I have and such, as you can see, I already have this set up. Um, you can see my scripts in my GitHub. Uh, I just say trust because that makes things simpler. You can set up a Git re GitHub repository if you have one, but by far not at all required for what we're going to be doing. So I will just open a file just so that you can see. Okay, so VS Code doesn't really see this as anything more than just a text file because .zs and then you also have .zh. Uh, uh, Visual Studio Code doesn't really know what to do with that. So the first thing we're going to want to do is create a file association with it. So we're going to go down to settings and then we can just search association. Hopefully it would pop up a little sooner. Here we go. So now this is this was kind of just me choosing a file type or I guess a language that is similar enough to Zscript and I chose C++. So we can do like dot zs and then give that a value of cpp. When VS Code receives these file types, it's going to treat it as a cpp file, uh, which the real benefits that I see to that is some of the text highlighting and just other acknowledgments that this is actual code and not just aimless text. So there you have it. Now we actually have our association and you can already see that all the icons for my files that are ZS and ZHs are now they have now changed to a C++ extension and look at that beautiful we have a a bunch of colorization so the next thing we're going to set up is IntelliSense which is a part of like text smart text autofill and formatting so we're going to go to settings extensions type C C++ and you can see right here, we have the C, C++, IntelliSense, debugging, code browsing. The only immediate benefits we're going to see right now are with IntelliSense. So we're just going to install that. I'm not going to explain much on like deeper in and what some of the stuff means and like how it would necessarily benefit you. Uh, perhaps if this is something that the community, the Zelda Cla uh, ZQuest Classic community sees a lot of value in, maybe we can expand on it. Back in the settings. And we're going to search for Clang, and this is, oh, well, okay, it popped right up. So we're going to go to Formatting, and th this is kind of a formatting profile that Visual Studio Code or Visual Studios is going to use when formatting. We don't want to use that. We want to manually set up our own, and you can already see I will go into my script file or directory, and you'll see I had this Clang format. So basically what we're, what's going to happen is we're not going to use any stock formatting profiles. We're going to define our own because Zscript is not C++. 
And so there's going to be a lot of rules in C++ we don't want to take place in Zscript. And there's also some syntax syntactual differences, which is going to cause issues. And I will get into those in a little bit. So we're going to set this to none. That's basically going to force VS Code to look for a manually defined file. Now, you're not going to have one at your root directory, not in any folders, but right out here. Uh, you can do right click anywhere down there. A new file, and then you could call it dot clang dash format. I already did that, so I already have one, so I'm not going to do it again. But basically, all this is, and I ha I did link some docs so that you could see all the rules. Essentially, it's a rule set with your code. So, like, I'm setting my indent width to three, uh, namespace indentation all. So, if you have a, uh, if you're using namespaces that have code in them, it's not going to indent it against the margin, it's actually gonna indent it properly. I have some other rules that are opinionated towards me, but of course you can set whatever rule you want. You could hold control, click on this, and it'll take you to some fairly lengthy docs. Basically, if, you're, if you've used any linting or whatnot, if you're also a developer or you've dab dabbled in linting, um, that's essentially what this is. It's very analogous to like Prettier and ESLint, which are two things that I've used in my own work. Um, and yeah, these are the rules that I found worked well with my code base and also didn't break things. So the formatting's in there, but it's never really going to run the formatting. I'm sure there's a keyboard shortcut that'll run it. I'm not super familiar with VS Code. Personally, I've used IntelliJ myself. What we want to do is we want to set up the formatter to run on th actions such as when you save, if you hit like Control S, it'd be nice to have it just automatically format. Or if I like click away, like let's say... I made a code change and a script change, and then I want to just go in here, hit Y, and hit compile um, without having to save or anything. That'd be really convenient, right? So we're gonna set it up so that we can basically do that. Where, like, I personally never have to hit save anymore. I just make my code change and then go over, and clicking out of VS Code will automatically save your changes. So for that, we're gonna want to go to into settings and search format. Um, and it should pop up. Here we go. So we can format on paste. So if we copy some code, say from Discord, um, it will automatically format it. We want it to format on save. Another setting here that would likely be valuable is format on save formats the whole file or only modifications. So say I only modified this one specific script and I didn't want to format everything else, you can have it just format whatever you change. And I could even demonstrate that if I were to say mess this up and then hit Control S, you'll see that it automatically formatted that, and it also would have automatically formatted the rest of my file because I have it set to file. You can basically just choose whatever you want for yourself. I personally want the whole file. That'll keep the whole file in sync. You can also have it set to format on type. So I can actually test that right here. Let's go in um, equals zero. Yeah, so you can see it immediately formatted it. Personally, I kind of don't really want it, but if you want to have your stuff, your, your code formatted like as in real time as possible, you could go with that. Another setting you're going to want to set. So back here in the settings, if you were to go to extension, C++, formatting, formatting, it'll be set to default. Um, it does say by default it will use Clang format, but given that we want to absolutely make sure that it's using our uh, Clang format file, we're just going to manually set that to Clang format. Another thing to mention, I don't know if you'll have to do this. I spent a lot of time messing around with this and found that my current behavior is what worked the best. But I personally have all of these settings here essentially turned off if they're turned on. I don't know if it matters if you have an actual file. I, I feel like this should override any settings that are set in here, but if you do have any weird behavior, I would uncheck these. Okay, so the final thing we're going to want to do is since we have it set up to where if I were to hit Control S, that runs the formatter, but like, like how I mentioned that I can make a code change and then just go into ZQ and you can see that the code didn't actually change. Well, let's set that up. So go back into your settings. I guess I could just go up to it right here and we can just search for auto save. And you could have it set up multiple ways where it'll auto save after some delay and you could have it set up like here for uh, a thousand milliseconds or like a second. 
or you could do it on focus change. The one that I chose was on window change. That's what's going to trigger when you click out of VS Code and into, say, ZQ. Uh, so I'm going to hit that. And now I should be able to change code and then click here. And boom, you can see that it automatically formatted it. So there is one more thing that I do want to address. And that is, what if there are some very specific situations where you don't want the Clang formatter to run? You may have noticed that I have this Clang format off and Clang format on comments. So these will actually disable the formatter and then re-enable the formatter. So if I were to say, remove this and this, and then hit save, or I'll click out, you'll see it did something really weird. This isn't C++ and yet we're using a C++ formatter. So there are some things that are going to behave weird, like FFC script. They aren't acknowledged keywords within C++. So I don't know why it chooses to do this. I'm guessing it's because it's something to do with this at author. It might think that it might treat annotations differently. That's my guess. I don't really know. And yeah, no matter how hard I try, it's, it's just going to keep formatting it that way. So if you ever had any particular lines you wanted to disable, you basically just you know, write a comment and, and then do clang format off, and then you could do on. So actually, if I left off, it would never turn back on. So you'll see it'll never format anything, even stuff down here at the bottom of the file. And that is why I have this on right here. This could be something that I could see concerning you, like, well, crap, what if I enable this formatter and it, a bunch of my code breaks because I'm using a lot of non-C++ syntax. You might be able to guess what I'm going to say, and that's that the compiler itself should be able to handle it. So you see, I click off, and I don't know why it did this. Again, I, I don't know how C++ treats this. I don't know what it thinks it is, but I first found these issues when I attempted to compile, and uh-oh, bit, e oh, it's bit XOR. Um, yeah, it's just not happy. So I basically just had to find any instances of bit XOR, and ignore it. It's not ideal, but when you consider how much, like for me, where I have like 10,000 lines of code and maybe 10 lines have to be babysat like this, I'm probably going to stick with this. Uh, but yeah, that's all I have for you. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments or ping me on Discord. I am more than willing to help anyone that wants to get this set up. And like I said, even with the GitHub repo, if you want me to help you set up a GitHub repo, I could do that as well. Uh, but yeah, I hope, I hope at least some of you found this informative and will enjoy writing your scripts in an actual like development environment instead of just some primitive text editor like Notepad++ or I would hope no one's using Notepad. <laughs> but this is, this is probably the best that we're going to get for a while in Zscript. Um, yeah, see you guys later.